How are you? I'm about to call into the phone show on 505-796-4020. I need to ask Brad Carter a bunch of questions, and I want to have them answered immediately. Who is Matt Hillock's daddy, and what does he do? What is all this cactus about? Okay, I'll stop with the out-of-dated soundboard references now. <laughs> so stop whining, you idiots. And I hope Skunkworks leaves enough room for my fist because I'm going to ram it through his stomach. Cactus. 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 Am I supposed to be doing this? Cactus. 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 This cocksucker. Cactus. 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 You got to be crap on my balls. Cactus. 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 It's going to be a fuck job to edit. Cactus. 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 Roy, the retarded boy. Cactus. 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 How about if I come down and punch your head off? Cactus. 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 You blowing smoke up my ass. Cactus. 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 You think a tracer can stop me? Hey everyone, I'm back. This is Roy, and you're listening to The Snowplow Show, sponsored today by Chris and Sarah. Thanks, Chris and Sarah, for supporting the show for kind of a long time now. Everybody on YouTube and Facebook and my own website are complaining at me and yelling at me for not doing a show in over a week now. And didn't I tell you guys, I mean, I don't remember, but I'm pretty sure I mentioned it, that I was going to be gone for a week and that I would definitely be doing a show this week. And here I am. I'm doing the show just like I promised. I don't know what you guys are complaining about. But I gave you a warning this time. I let you know I was going to be gone for a week, and I was gone for a week, and I'm back now, so settle the fuck down, people. What the hell? If anyone wants pictures of my good time vacation, you can go to uh, facebook.com slash bradthecarter or instagram.com slash bradbcp. I th- is that how their URLs work? I don't know. My username is bradbcp. And you remember, uh, I don't know, earlier, I-, I guess last year, I deleted about 3,000 people from my Facebook because I was just sick of all the people and all of the messages yelling at me for not responding to them and being flooded with game requests and having my feed just filled with people I don't know. I give up, okay? I'm, I've am i started letting people add me on Facebook again. If you want to add me on Facebook, I really just don't care at this point. You can add me on Facebook, facebook.com slash Brad the Carter. Add me on there. I won't kick you off this time. I promise I will never do that again. I got a lot of angry emails over that, which I completely ignored when I did that a few months ago. So today I have very important breaking news that I'm sure none of you have heard of yet. But I'm gonna play it's such breaking news that I'm gonna play the breaking news music for it. Prank Call Nation is gone. It's over with. It just does not exist anymore. It has been shut down by all of us, me, Carlito, Giad, and the rest of us. It's gone. No more Prank Call Nation. Uh, people have been flipping out over this, uh, not just because Prank Call Nation is gone, but because they think this means the PLA is gone too. And I guess I didn't help matters by disappearing for an entire week. Even though I said I was going to be gone for a week. Damn you people. But Prank Call Nation has officially dissolved. It is no longer a group for prank callers. And the reason, I mean, it's basically just because of nonstop drama. The exact same stuff I killed Cacti Radio over. You know, just constant drama. It's so much to deal with. Who wants to deal with all that? Pretty much from the day it started until just recently, it's been nonstop drama for two years or three years straight or however long it's existed. It's just never ending and it's never going to end. And this is what happens when you run a community, I guess. It happened every time I ran a community. I think Carlito was probably getting the worst of it. If I were Carlito, I probably would have killed it a year or two earlier, knowing all of the shit that he had to deal with. Uh, The best way to explain the whole Prank Call Nation thing, though, is to go listen to the Carlito interview that he did with, uh, uh, what's the name of that thing? I linked it in the last show, Lettuce Radio, I think, kind of a newer podcast. They did an interview with Carlito. I think it was an hour or two long, and it was a really good interview. It was really interesting, especially if you're into Madhouse and you like the stuff that Carlito does. Uh, This guy just really did a great job at asking Madhouse-related questions, but then near the end of the show, they got into the whole Prank Call Nation thing, and Carlito explained why it's going away. And that's why I've been lying to you all for the past few shows and saying, Prank Call Nation will never go anywhere, or whatever I was saying, I don't remember, but Prank Call Nation is gone. 
this means absolutely nothing for me or the Snowplow Show or the Phone Losers of America. I mean, it sucks and everything. I'll miss Prank Call Nation. It was an awesome thing that we all set up together, and it really sucks that it has to go away. But it's for the best, probably, I think. And Carlito, he's not going anywhere. Me and Carlito, we're still going to be here. Giad, I think his plan is to quit doing his live show, which uh, he told me a few times he was kind of losing his passion over. But he's definitely going to keep doing the calls of mass confusion thing that me and him started together. So we will all still be working together, all of the Prank Call Nation people, most of them anyway. We will still be working together on calls of mass confusion. Basically, Giad is the the hub of prank calls right now because he's going to be getting everyone together to do prank calls with them so he can record them with hidden video cameras in public places. And also, even though Prank Call Nation is gone now, is, is it really gone? Because the Facebook is still there. And the Mixler seems to still be there. I think Ken is using the Mixler to do shows now. So is Prank Call Nation gone, or did we just hand it over to Ken slash Dwight? I don't really know what's going to happen with all that. I figured it would all just disappear, because Prank Call Nation is dead. Why keep it around? But I think maybe it's gonna, some of it's going to stick around. I don't know what's going on with it. Don't ask me. Go to the Facebook pages and talk to them about it if you have any questions. I know absolutely nothing. All I know is PCN is gone, but I will still be doing live shows. I think, I don't know if I'm going to set up my own Mixler for doing live shows, or if I'm going to switch over to YouTube to do live shows from now on. But most likely, I'll probably start um, broadcasting on Shoutcast again, like it's the 1990s. I still have my Shoutcast that uh, runs 24-7 and plays the best of PLA shows and everything, which you can listen to by going to phonelosers.org, and I... I think there's still a Shoutcast player up there in the left-hand sidebar. Last I checked, I think it still works. But I haven't been broadcasting on that in a long time because I just use Prank Call Nation and I'm too lazy to set up all of the other things. So anyway, I haven't figured things out yet for myself for live shows, but I can promise you live shows are not going away with the Snowplow Show. I enjoy doing them and I will still do them. Uh, what else? Oh yeah, Patreon packages. I have not sent out a Patreon package in several months now. People have emailed me about this and said, Hey, do you still have my correct address? I haven't gotten anything from me in a long time. And I have to respond with, Yes, I still have your address. I'm just lazy. And I guess the main reason I haven't sent anything out is just because I didn't have anything to send. I didn't know what to make. Uh, I'm kind of out of ideas for just PLA stickers, as you'll probably notice in the new packages that I just sent out this week. But a lot of people sent me uh, stuff to send out to you people, like Corbin Guy. Oregon guy, whatever I call him these days, I forget. He sent me a bunch of his spray paint art and some other things, which I enclosed in the packages this past week. Uh, Clown Sec, they sent me some really cool things several different times, and those went out with all of the packages this week. And Neon from the Neon Night Show at 976neon.com, she sent me a bunch of her stickers for her show to promote her show. So everyone, well, almost everyone anyway, I ran out of them, but most of the people received a Neon Knights sticker. She's another one from Prank Call Nation that is not going anywhere. She's going to be doing her own show on her own site at 976neon.com. And I did make a new PLA sticker design, but I don't know what I think about it. Uh, You guys will have to tell me what you think. But packages are in the mail. They have been sent out a couple of days ago. Uh, Some of you got them uh, a week ago because I... I'd, I'd had enough postage to send out maybe 10 or 20 of them, but the rest of them were sent out uh, just a couple days ago, so you'll be getting stuff in the mail soon. If you're at a level where you get packages sent to you, if you're donating like a dollar a month, don't yell at me about not getting a package because you don't get one. God damn it. And about mailing things out, you know, like when Patreon, when this whole Patreon thing first started, I was mailing things out every single month. And it was kind of easy at first because there wasn't a lot of you, but the numbers have gone way up and it's a lot harder to mail a bunch of things out like I do now. I mean, you know, it usually takes me a couple of evenings of addressing envelopes and just putting everything together to go in the envelopes. So I switched to every other month. And then I think uh, after that, I switched. I'm like, oh, well, I'll send you something every few months. So that's the official time that you get things in the mail now is every few months, whatever that means. I mean, I guess technically that could mean every seven months but I'll try to keep it at every three or four months. And I really didn't mean to wait this long to mail things out this last time. I'm sorry, okay? I'm sorry. That's what I'm trying to say. I'm sorry. And also, speaking of Patreon, I just suck in general. I haven't been doing secret shows. I've just... I I have not done a single thing on the whole Telephone Falls episode that I promised to put out, which I still... I promise it's gonna happen. I feel like a politician with my promises, but I don't know. I'm just kind of overwhelmed with everything. 
I think, though, that this needs to be the year where things make a serious turn here at PLA headquarters, at the Situation Room, with the Snowplow Show and everything. I really need to step things up because you guys have been supporting me for a long time, and I'm starting to think that you guys are going to keep doing it. At first, I thought it was just, uh, oh, let's do this, and then we'll get tired of it after a month or two. But it's been close to two years now, and you guys are awesome and supporting the show. And I really, really, really appreciate it. And I really just need to do more things for you people because you're doing so much for me. So that is my New Year's resolution. I'm going to do better here at PLA for doing PLA things. And make sure next year, if I have not done better, I want you all to yell at me and stop supporting me and tell me I'm full of shit. And seriously, you need to do this stuff or I'll never learn. Anyway, this has been a really long introduction, I think, so I need to cut it out. And we need to get started on a show, on actual show material content stuff. So here it goes. Here is my attempt at today's show. I have a list of customers that was sent in to me by a guy named Cobra. Some of you guys might know him as um, the co-host from Dirty Aaron's old show, the Brent Westwood show, which kind of stopped doing shows, but then would occasionally come back and do a show every once in a while. I don't know whatever happened to those guys. But I do see Cobra online quite a bit playing Grand Theft Auto. Anyway, he says, here is a phone list from a pizza shop I get lunch at. And he says it's located uh, about an hour from Seattle. I don't know why they asked for numbers without names, so you will have to wing it. Because the list is just phone numbers and email addresses and nothing else. Cobra says, I guess you could say you're from the pizza shop and they won some wacky promotion or they were causing problems the last time they were in. There is a middle school across the street, so you could say they aren't allowed to come in anymore due to their sex offender status. Maybe an alert went off when they last came in and the police stopped by because of it. And what Cobra sent me here, it's a list that's about 12 phone numbers without names, but we know they were in the pizza place. But some of them have names because their names are in their email addresses. So let's call up one. The first one does have a name on it, or two possible names, I guess. Hello? Hi, is this Jamie? Yeah. Hey, this is uh, Dave. I'm from City Pizza. You guys were in here a while yeah. back. Uh huh. And um, I don't suppose Matthew's around, is he? Um, my husband. Yes. Um, he's not close by, but I can get. I can have him call you. Well, I just I needed to let you know of a small problem from when he comes in. Um, you're you're aware that there's a uh, there's a middle school across the street from us, right? Yes. Okay, well, he's not allowed to be within so many feet of a middle school because of his sex offender status. So I was because wondering... Uh, my husband doesn't have one. You're, you're talking about a different... Oh, no, the, the sensors went off when he came by because the police visited us afterward. My husband? Yeah, yeah, Matthew. Yeah, he, he has a, He's a registered sex offender, and I just wanted to ask if maybe you could come in instead of him since we're right across from a middle school. This must be Anthony. No, no, my name is Dave. With City Pizza. Uh, you you have very incorrect information. Which part is incorrect? All of it. The sex offender thing. <laughs> yes. Okay. Well, no, I'm not. I'm not trying to call him out or anything. I'm not trying to be a jerk about. It. I'm just saying, since he does have that status, we can't let him be coming in here because it. It's well, we set- don't come in there we've always called and had stuff delivered yeah but he's been in here a few, a few times and we just need to let him know that he can't come in here because there's a middle school right across the street this has got to be a joke i wouldn't joke about sex offenders ma'am well i wouldn't either but that, that you absolutely have the wrong information i mean i would look up information on the county website and prove to you otherwise oh no that's what we did we we checked the county website the sex offender website because the alarm went off and it definitely has his name on there in this picture we compared it to the picture on our security cameras <laughs> and like, your name is dave yeah, yeah, and every time he if he comes in here it sets off the alarm. It sets it trips the sensors because it's so close to the middle school. That's very interesting. And what's your phone number? So you you think um being a sex offender is interesting? Is that why you married him? This is Anthony for sure. Who the fuck is Anthony? I'm not Anthony, ma'am. I I'm just Dave from the pizza place. Okay, what's your phone number, Dave? 
Uh, it should be on your car- caller ID there. No, nothing's on my caller ID. It just says no caller ID. Oh, you need to get your caller ID fixed. It's definitely there. But yes. <laughs> well, this definitely isn't Dave calling pretty deep that. <laughs> no, I, I really am. I don't know why you think I'm not. <laughs> because I just don't believe it for a second. Okay. Well, it's nice that you think this is a well, big joke. I guess you have to have call. a you have to have a sense of humor to marry a sex offender, right? Yeah. Well, I would never trust me. He's retired army, and he is my hero, and I would never ever do that. Okay. Never. All right. Thank you. Well, I mean, just because he's army doesn't mean anything. <laughs> this is definitely Anthony. Funny, funny, funny. All right, thanks. Okay, have fun talking to Anthony and realizing that I'm... Okay, <laughs> she's gone. So let's move on to the next one. It is for someone with the the beginning of their email address says Coog Mom. So she's a Cougar Mom, I guess. Coog Mom 15. Hello? Hi, this is Dave from City Pizza. You were in here a while back. Uh-huh. And, um... Yeah? I just needed to find out, um... I mean, I feel kind of weird asking about this, but we saw you uh, on the security camera after you left that you'd stolen our tip jar. Excuse me? I think you heard me. And I was just wondering if uh, um, if you could at least bring the money back from the tip jar. You um, can keep the jar itself if you want, but we need that back. I think you have the wrong person, and I don't know who you are. Well, no, it's, um, I already told you who I am. I, I am. This is Dave from City Pizza. Okay, and who are you at City Pizza? I'm an employee here. I'm the manager. You're the manager? Yep. And um, who is your supervisor? Well, I don't know why you're getting an attitude with me. You're the one that stole a tip jar from um, us. You know what? Okay, then what does the picture on your camera look like? And I'll tell you if it's me or not. Oh, we know it's you. I know exactly who you are. You're the one with the attitude. You were, you were just like this when you're talking to the employees, too. I don't think so, because I've never had a problem when I've been in to get pizza from your place. But I'm telling you now, I don't think I'll ever be back. Well, I mean, the employees, so they're, like they're afraid to, to say things to you because they're afraid of you, but I'm not. I'm just saying, you, you need to bring okay, back our... Okay, I want to know who, you, who your supervisor is, and what is your last name? Well, why do you need all that? You're, you're going to, what, turn me in for because I told you you can't steal stuff from our place? Um, well, first of all... Um, you're accusing me of something that I have not done. Yeah, I noticed when you're not... When did this happen? When did this happen? Oh, you know when it happened. Like, have you done it so many times that you don't know when it happened? You don't remember which time I'm referring to? What is your last name, Dave? Sherbell. How do you spell that? C-H-E-R-B-A-L. B-H-E-L-L-D-A-R? Uh-huh, yep. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, well, I'm going to get hold of somebody because you're refusing to give me your supervisor's name. Oh, and no, I didn't you're refuse. you're accusing me of something that I have no recollection of. Uh, okay. I've not been in your guys' place once for quite a while, actually. Oh, yes, you and have. Two, we know I've you never have. Been you were here. You're so full of... When was sh- I there? When, is, so when was this? Basically, you're telling me you're a thief and a liar because you're denying that you're in here, and we know you're in here. I don't have anything. We're not we're not calling the police on you or anything. We just want our money back. Well, you know what? I might be calling them on you. How for, does that sound? For what? Being pissed that you stole our tip jar? For accusing me of something that I'm not done. We had over $20 in there, and you just walked in and stole it. Okay, I would like to come in and see this video that you apparently have of me doing this. Oh, I know I have it. Yeah, okay, I will be in today when I get off okay, of my Okay, well, I, I hope when you see the video, you you apologize to me. Oh, and I will. When you see that it's you. You are totally wrong, and if not, you will be apologizing to me. Yeah, and, and if... How it, does that sound? And, and if it is you on the How video... How does that sound? Oh, it sounds perfect, ma'am. Oh, you're a joy. You know what? I'll be bringing my fiancé in with me when we come to view this video of you so telling me that I've... Stolen from you. Oh, we know you've stolen we from will us. Be, we will be in today. I hope, I I hope your fiancé breaks up with you when he finds out that you're a thief. Oh, he won't. Trust me, because you are full of it. You're full of it. <laughs> okay. So this is a pretty good list so far, Cobra. Two people out of two people have answered. And they've both been somewhat amusing, especially that lady. 
Uh, this next guy, I think his name might be Charles, based on his email address. I know I could just type these email addresses into um, into Facebook and find Welcome out their names. To Verizon Wireless. The number you dialed has been changed. Oh, disconnected. Cobra, your list sucks. Give me disconnected numbers. But yeah, anyway, I'm too lazy to type these email addresses into Facebook or Gmail or whatever else I could use to get their names from. Hello, this is Marie. Hey, Marie, this is Stephen from City Pizza. Well, did you need to order a pizza? We don't make as good a pizza as you, but... I'm sorry, what? I said we don't make as good a pizza as you, but what can I do for you? Oh, um, I was just calling to find out. You've ordered pizzas from us in the past, and uh, we haven't received oh, your... Oh, of course. Yeah, of course. Yeah, so uh, we haven't received the pizza boxes back yet for the recycling? Mm-hmm. So do you know when those will be returned? Um, I didn't know that you were recycling. Yeah, those are re- reusable pizza boxes. We just wash them out and use them for the next customer. Well, we will absolutely do that from now on. We have never done that before. Oh, no, we've been doing that for okay. years now. Well, why did you tell me that? Well, I thought it was... It's pretty much common knowledge. Well... I mean, all, I'm not a common person. All the major chains do that now. You're supposed to return your pizza box so they can wash it and return it. I mean, use, reuse it for That's freaking awesome. Yeah. And I will, pass that, I will pass that along at my business to tell them they can return it to me so I can bring it to you. Okay. Well, it shows here on your account um, your, your right? eight boxes that you haven't returned, and it's $5 per box, so that's $40 we need to get from you. Yeah, well, that you need to get... Do I owe it to you? Yeah, yeah, you owe that to us. Next time you order a pizza, we're going to tack that onto your bill. No, you're not. Of course we are. It's We, we can't just be throwing away boxes like that. It costs us money. Are you mo- serious? Yeah, it costs us money. <laughs> you didn't break your voice, but you say that, because I know you're kidding. I need to what? Are you kidding? No, I'm not kidding, ma'am. Wow. I did not know that. Okay. Don't tell people that in that tone of voice because they'll never return some more pizza from you again. I feel horrible. Oh, you should. I mean, this is bullshit. (laughs) The forty dollars were out and from because of you. Well, well, don't make it sound so serious. Well, it is kind of serious. It's forty dollars. We just need to let you know that we're going to be putting that on your bill for the next pizza order. Well, motherfucker. because you didn't crack a grin, <laughs> did you call me a motherfucker? You're kind of being a motherfucker. Are you making fun of the way I talk or something? No, I was actually really teasing because I really didn't know. Okay. You can tease all you want, but we still you still owe us $40. <laughs> well, first of all, I want to order another pizza from you. Of all, oh, you're not going to order pizza now because you owe forty dollars because you're stupid and can't follow the rules. Approach. Make it a joke. What? No, I'm not make making jokes. Ha- Why do you keep talking about joke. jokes? To encourage people to bring the the five dollar. Well, pizza I'm sorry, I'm not back. a fucking comedian here. I'm just uh, I'm just a guy working at a pizza place. We just want to get our boxes back. Like every uh, everyone else, no one else has a problem returning boxes. It's just you. Where is your name? My name is Roy. Roy. I run 13 businesses, and I would be more than happy to bring your boxes back. You run 13 I've businesses? I've never been told, first of all, and I've never been ever, out of 45 years, been talked to the way you just talked to me. Oh, okay. Well, congratulations on the new experience. <laughs> The last name? Sure, Bell. But sure I, Bell. Why, why are you taking down all my information? You're the one that, that that's on trial. No, honey. The customer's always right. I would have been. Oh, happy that is bullshit. The customer is not. If you run 13 businesses, you know that the customer is not always right. Because there's always Wait, there's how always are you, how old are you? there's always got to be how one like you, you that thinks they don't how, have to follow the how rules. How old are you? They could just throw away their pizza boxes and destroy the earth. <laughs> How old are you? I'm 43. Okay. 
Well, listen. Wait, wait, wait. Why, why'd you ask that? Office. Why'd you ask how old I am? Because I'm going to call the corporate office. Because I w- I'm a very nice person. Well, not too and nice. You're throwing away our pizza boxes. Your money. But you should have never, ever approached me that way or you will never get your boxes back. Oh, now you're threatening hey, me. Hey, didn't you remember? We need those boxes. I'm, re- make, I'm re- it a, make it a, Make it a comedy. What are you talking apologize about comedy and them. jokes? Don't make them apologize to you. What, what are you talking about make, making things a comedy? I don't understand that. Uh, I can understand that. That's why you should not be in management. I shouldn't be in management because I don't know how to do comedy? What the f- Okay, she's gone. <laughs> at least I turned her attitude around. She's all laughing and trying to joke around about it at first. And now she's pissed and she's going to talk to the corporate office. Because I'm 43 years old. Apparently that makes some sort of a difference. I think the reason she asked about my age is because, like, if I said I was 20-something years old, she's going to say I didn't have enough life experience to be a manager. But I fucked it up when I told her I was 43. Hello? Hello, Rachel? Yep. Hi, this is uh, Steven from the City Pizza. Hi. Hi. Um, I just needed to let you know, uh, I mean, you've ordered pizzas from us in the past, but it doesn't seem like you've been bringing your boxes back after you... uh, you know, you know, after you order them. Uh huh. So I was just wondering. Well, I didn't realize that that was a thing. Oh yeah, we we recycle all the pizza boxes. You have to bring them back, and we wash them out and give them to the next customer. Oh cool. But uh, you haven't. Well, bought, I'll start doing that. I didn't. No one ever told me. Oh you okay? Well, I mean, you're uh, the system alerted us because you're ten boxes behind now, and those are five dollars a piece. Hmm. So we're gonna have to ask for uh, gonna be fifty dollars. Uh, well, but nobody ever told me that that was a situation that was necessary, so I won't be paying. That's not okay to just spring it on me when no one ever told me that I was supposed to be bringing them back. Okay, well, it's it's not our job to, to you know, let you know how common sense works. It, well, it's, it's just, not common sense when it's never been, I mean, nobody does that. Yeah, they do. All the pizza places you do order, that. You Domino's. order pizza and you recycle your own boxes, and yeah, that's we, not... We just wash my, it. That's, I've never been charged to, for a recycle box to, to, to return a pizza box before in my life. I've never been told that that was... I mean, I think it's great that you guys do it, but I shouldn't be charged for it when I was never told. Everybody, that everybody does it, ma'am. Like, every major pizza chain does no, this. No, yes, they do. No. You're an idiot no. if you don't know this. <laughs> I mean, Lovely. No, Lovely. Th- th- this is stupid. Yeah. This, is, this is like... Okay, goodbye. This, this, ma'am. Ma'am. <laughs> God... Call her right back. Can't believe people hang up on me like that. Hi, you reached Rachel. And now she won't even pick up the phone so I can let her know it's a prank. Oh, well. Uh, So that's the end of the list for now. Um, There's still quite a few that didn't answer. And I'm going to hold on to this list and maybe give them a call back later in the evenings or something. But I am going to call back that one lady. I think it was the second lady I called and she got pretty upset with me. Because, uh, uh, what did I say to her? I think she said we, I think I said she stole our tip jar, is what it was. I'm going to give her a call back and see what she has to say. Hello? Hi, this is Dave. I'm the producer for the Skippy and Dippy Wacky Morning Show on the radio. Uh Uh-huh. And I just needed to get your permission to air that prank call they made to you earlier about the, uh, pizza. Really? Because, you know, I've called the police on this prank call that you're now informing me of. Oh, no, that was really stupid of you, ma'am. No, this is just a radio prank. It's a morning show prank. Why would you call the... Well, when... (laughs) Okay, what is your name? Uh, My name is Dave. I'm the producer here. But, no, it was really dumb of you to call the police. It's just a prank. You're wasting their time, you idiot. So you're the producer for what? For the Skippy and Dippy Wacky Morning Radio Show. I'm sure you've heard of us. You probably listen to it in the mornings. And Skippy Dippy Radio Show? Oh, don't pretend you don't know it. It's the most popular radio show in this area. And and you're the producer for this show? Yeah, this is Dave. I don't see what your problem is. I mean, no wonder. Okay, look, it doesn't even matter. I just need your permission to air the call on the radio. Oh, no, you do not have my permission. Oh, and no. I want to know where it is you're calling from, because this is not... Uh, what radio station is this from? It's, it's from uh, 109.3, The Kite. Kite? 
Never yeah. heard of it. Oh, yes, you have. We're the most popular radio station in this area. So you can, you're can. you full of shit if you're saying you haven't heard of it. We have billboards everywhere. Well, I'm sorry. I'm not aware of it. Okay. Well, we're probably just going to edit your name out of it, and we'll go ahead and air it anyway. Because, uh, like... Well, I, I wanna... no, I don't want anything aired. Like I said, I've already called the police, and the officer is already investigating all of this. Well, we're, we're going to just edit your voice out, and you'll never be able to prove that it was you on that call. We'll just say it was someone else. We'll have one of our interns say it was them. Um. Okay, who's your supervisor? Steve. Steve. Yeah. And what is Steve's phone number? Oh, no, it doesn't even matter. It does, since If you're not going to give us permission, then you don't even need that. Don't worry about it. Well, no, I would like it so that I could refer this to the officer that's handling yeah. this right now. Well, you know, you, sh- you should call the police on three-way right now, and I'll explain to them that you're an idiot and the, the, you, they shouldn't have bothered you. I mean, you shouldn't have bothered them, I mean. I shouldn't have bothered them. Well. Yeah, because, um, you know, they have better things to do than... You know, <laughs> one single phone call and get mad about that. Well, you know what? Maybe I will just call the police back right now as I've got you on the phone. Yeah, just let them know. Say, hey, officer, I'm so s- sorry that I'm stupid and that I wasted your time, the department's time, for just, you know, a prank call. Apparently, you don't have anything better to do either, sir. Well, no, so- this, this is our job. This is what we do for a living. It's a radio show. Yeah, I need to speak with Officer please. Well, this isn't three-way. You're you're calling him on another phone. I can't hear. He, um, okay, yeah, because he's working on a situation with me, and I don't have a number to call him back on, but he's been calling me. A situation, a.k.a. a yeah, minor I nuisance that I shouldn't bother the police with. Tell him that. Yes. Tell him that. Ma'am. Thank you. Ma'am. Did you Just say? A moment. Did you say that part? I can't hear. You didn't put it on three way. This is bullshit. Yes. Okay, so ma'am, you just said yes there. I'm gonna edit that so it says. Um, no. <laughs> I'm gonna make you it. You just need to hold on. No, I'm gonna make it sound like you said yes that we can air your call on the air. No, you cannot air anything. I know. I'm gonna edit that part out where you say no, and I'm gonna change it to yes because you said yes just now. I'm a professional with the audio editing stuff. Uh, what are you doing right now? Are you, are you on hold or something? Yes, I am. Oh, that was a much better uh, yes that I can use. Thank you. For when I edit the audio together to make it sound like you said yes, we can air this call. Do you love America, ma'am? I'm trying to get another yes out of her. Just hold on. Oh, crap. I wasn't muted. Yeah, I need to speak with Officer B, please. This is Cheryl. Oh, I just talked to him like five minutes ago, and he's working on something with me. Something that he shouldn't be. That's okay. Oh, it, okay, the thing is, is he's helping me with a situation, and I've got this caller on my other phone, and I want him to hear this caller because he is harassing me. I'm not harassing. I'm just getting permission, ma'am. Just, it's just one phone call. It's not harassment. Yeah, I need to uh, speak with Officer please. Uh, yeah, he just said he was Officer. Are you going to say sorry to them, ma'am? Yes. Okay, great. Well, uh, he was working with me regarding a situation of some prank phone calls or some threatening phone calls that I've been getting, and I've got this call on my Come cell on. phone again causing me more trouble and I want him to be able to hear this guy or I don't know do something with this guy I'm at at work in Marysville oh where do you work at ma'am aw she hung up on me I thought she wanted the police to hear me on the phone with her I can't believe she called the police on me though over nothing what did I even say to her I can't remember oh wait yeah it was the tip jar thing wasn't it Maybe because I accused her of stealing something, that's a police matter somehow. I guess before I quit on this segment, I should make sure we have all our bases covered here at the radio station. Just so there's a clear record of this and everything, I need to do something here real quick. I know this part's probably going to be boring to you listeners, but I have to do it just to cover my ass, okay? So, Cheryl, would you mind if I used the phone calls that we made to you on our radio show? 
Is that okay with you? Yes, you have my permission. You're sure it's okay? Yeah. I mean, you're absolutely positive. We can air this on the air for our listeners, and we can make fun of you, and you're going to look really dumb, and that's okay with you, right? Yes. So what you're saying is that we do have your permission to air this. Yes. And can we turn any of the quotes you said during that call, can we turn them into t-shirts to sell for a profit? Yes. Even though you won't get any of the profits, you'll still do this? It's okay with you? Yes. Okay, and we're probably going to put this on an album, too. We're going to sell compact discs and digital albums to the listeners of this prank call making you look like an idiot. Is that okay with you? Yes. And you won't get any money from that either. That's all right, right? Yes. Okay, great. And um, do you support Hitler and everything he stood for? Yes. Given the chance, would you murder a baby in its sleep? Yes. Wow, Cheryl, that's terrible. Would you club a baby seal? Yes. Holy crap. Okay. Would you stomp on a kitten? Yes. Are you a fan of glory holes? Yes. Have you ever committed a racist act? Yes. Would you say more than a hundred racist acts? Yes. Holy crap. You're a horrible person, Cheryl. Do you agree with that, that you're a horrible person? Yes. Okay. Well, at least you're honest. That's good. All right. I think that covers everything. So thank you, Cheryl, for giving me permission for those things and being honest with the listeners. And that's the end of this segment. Thank you, Cobra, for sending these in instead of using them for your own show or Dirty Aaron's show. I'm sure Dirty Aaron will really appreciate that you sent these to me instead of him. Let's do voicemails. Holy crap, look at the voicemails. I was afraid of this. They're out of control again. I think I'm going to start at the beginning of the voicemails this time. We're going to listen to the most recent ones, and then maybe I'll go back to the really old ones. Uh, hey, Brad, here's what a preset 77 sounds like on your mixer. So I thought you could uh, play around with this. Uh, sound like Alvin and the Chipmunks. Here's what it sounds like. Okay. That's pretty amazing. All right. Thank you, California person, for showing me how to use preset 77. Woohoo! I hate how it keeps my real voice in the background, but still plays the chipmunk voice over my voice. This is a stupid, stupid, cheap mixer. Hey, Roy, it's me. It's me. It's me. You know me. Okay, maybe you don't. But, anyways. I'm probably pretty late to the party when it comes to asking this, but uh, what the fuck happened to Carlito, man? He's, I know I'm on your show. I he's should dead. Be talking about you, but man, that guy has not put out any shows or anything. Did he die? I... Me and him did a show like two weeks ago, and then this voicemail's from 42 hours ago, so he should know this. Come on, man! Like we know that you know what's going on. You need to tell us what's up, man. Unless you already have. I mean. I haven't listened to every show, but yeah. Well, what happened to Carlito, man? Why is Carlito gone? All right, love you. Bye. Once again, everyone, listen to that interview with uh, Salad Radio, no, Lettuce Radio, whatever it's called. Uh, I'll have a link to it in the show notes if you want to listen to Carlito's interview. But Carlito, his immediate plans are to stop doing live shows for now. He's going to just start doing pre-recorded shows, kind of like this show is a lot of the times. But he will be putting shows out there still. Make sure you are subscribed to his podcast feed on madhouselive.com. Hey, Brad. How's Hello. It going? Just wondering if you enjoyed the snow over here. Yeah, it was I great. It got all mushy. Got to drive in it. It was awesome. We had to walk in it. Um, anyway, uh, I was just wondering if, uh, if you've heard from Carlito at all. Oh, what How's the hell? Going? Also, I bet everybody wants... You guys, leave me alone about Carlito. Jesus Christ. Curious, you know, how, what your kids got for Christmas this year. And I know it's a little bit late, but uh, tell us all, please. My kids Thank didn't you. get anything because I'm a horrible father. For Christmas, what I got my kids, I told them they didn't have to start doing their chores until noon. I let them sleep in on Christmas. That was my Christmas present. Hey, Brad. It's Grim. You know, your best friend? Yep. Well, you know, on one of your recent shows, you were talking about uh, Charlie from... Charlie and the Chocolate Factory, Wait right? Wait a minute. I, what, he, did, didn't we hear this already? What's going on? in Lowellville, New York. You know, I live there, too. I live about 15 miles away from him. And actually, when I was about probably 10 or 11, uh, we had a family friend that knew him. And I actually got to hold the golden ticket. Holy crap. And uh, I'm actually not making any of this up. It's actually all true. Wow. But he lives about 15 miles away from me. And maybe next year during the cardings, I could go leave a carding note on in one of his cars. Oh, that'd be great. Wouldn't that be wacky? Do it. All right, Brad. 
Yeah, I just thought I was. I just wanted to get your opinion on that. Maybe I should leave a carding note on his car. Yep, do it. Anyway, goodbye, Brad. You're an asshole. Thanks. Bye. Yeah, why not? Let's harass the shit out of Charlie. I'm sure that'll make Nunu very happy. Hey, Roy. It's Cindy again. And I just want to let you know that I got your letter for all the Patreon people. I ah, got see? See? I sent out the Patreons last week. See? I don't know what was it, a couple days ago. I got a PLACon three-day pass and a couple stickers and a lovely receipt from Jack in the Box, which yep. that was awesome. Thank I you. love my Jack in the Box. I wanted that. But anyway, I remember, I don't know if you remember something that I called and suggested you like with Yelp check-ins a couple months ago. I put that in my notes. I really need to do more Yelp check-ins. I haven't done those in a long time. It seems like every time I try, they just don't work out and I give up. So it's not my fault. I'm trying, I swear. But I decided to experiment with it myself and it actually worked. It was the Sailor Moon one to call a Sailor, or look on Yelp check-ins, call like a young girl, not really like young, but like kind of like early 20s, and try to get them to transform into Sailor Moon, and I got it to work. Wait, some what's retard happening? actually yelled that after some persuasion, of course, because she wasn't completely dumb, but she eventually did it in a Wendy's, and that was pretty fucking awesome. Another thing that I did with the McDonald's, which I think is pretty funny, is call up the McDonald's and call one, and say you're calling from one that's like in the same town or down the road or something, be like, hey, this is the manager, Roy, of so-and-so McDonald's, and we need some chicken McNuggets because we're running out. So could you send a guy over with a box or something like 20 minutes? And they'll be like, yeah, sure, whatever. So basically that's pretty funny when they just have guys running out with chicken McNuggets all over the city. Yep, but anyway, that's always stories. a good one. Years ago, when I used to go to the 2600 meetings in St. Louis, Missouri at the Galleria Mall, uh, we were in the food court, and I would call up one food court business and pretend to be the one next door. And I would say, hey, can you pass some straws over to me or pass some napkins over to me? And it was really stupid and pointless. But, I mean, we thought it was just hilarious when we'd watch them pass straws and napkins to each other. And the person receiving the straws or napkins would be completely confused. Come on, it's a little burn time. It's Corbin guy. Okay, hey, get Corbin ready for guy. this. What's the deal with uh, this dead Uncle Scott? Or Uncle Scott, you know, I don't... He, like, suddenly got all lofty in the penny loafers. So, uh, yeah. When you die, you become a uh, Twinkle Toe Zombie. Twinkle Toe Zombie. Okay, thanks, Corbin Guy, for that call. That makes a lot of sense. I'm not sure what you're talking about. I thought Uncle Scott stopped calling in, but I think he called in recently, or either that or someone impersonating him and doing a really good job of it. But he stayed dead for a long time, like a good six months or something, didn't he? Or am I missing something? Yo, Brad, Happy New Year. Guess what's coming up this January 31st? It's the 10th anniversary of PLA Radio. Holy crap. That's right, I'm expecting something awesome from you, bro. Something really awesome and cutting edge. All right, see you then. Happy New Year. I had no idea that that was coming up, assuming that guy is telling the truth, but he says that January 31st of this year will be the 10-year anniversary of PLA Radio, which was my official beginning into this whole podcasting, broadcast, whatever, internet radio stuff that I've been doing for the past 10 years. Holy cow, it's been 10 years now. That's actually a really great idea. I should do like a 10-year anniversary show for PLA Radio. That would be stupid and pointless, and I should do it. But I probably won't, because you all know I'm kind of lazy. Hey, Brad, it's Olga. Hey, Olga. Um, you're probably going to play this. Oh, oh, hold on. Let me turn on my soundboard with the rim shots. Okay, all right, here you go. Continue, Olga. Uh, after the holidays, which, you know, uh, if you play it at all, and that's fine if you don't, but uh, I don't really have a joke today. I just wanted to say that, Damn you know, it. I've been thinking of you, and when I hung Aww. the uh, cactus ornament on my Christmas tree, as well as the telephone ornament, um, both of which I got from the same place, I don't know, I just thought of you. I hope you had a good holiday, and all that stuff, and it sucks, you know, sorry, but hopefully it was good. Aww. Okay, time, time to cut out this mushy shit. Yeah. Bye! Bye, Olga. I had an awesome holiday, and I hope you did too, and the rest of the listeners, I guess, but especially you, Olga. I mean, really, come on, screw the other listeners. You're all that matters. 
So I wasn't planning on making this entire show nothing but pizza, but I was looking through my requests and I got another request in here, which I probably should have done something with about two months ago, because that's when it was sent in. But these are from a guy named Kentucky LOL. That's what his email name says. He doesn't sign his email with anything else, so I assume that's his name, Kentucky LOL. And he sent me a small list of pizza customers, just from a pizza chain store in the South. And it looks like um, he probably used my trick where he calls up the pizza place and says, Hey, I'm the corporate office. Give me your customer phone numbers and names. And they did it because, you know, they're all handwritten typed notes. I mean, typed handwritten. Does that make sense? You guys know what I mean. There's lots of misspellings and, and lower cases where there shouldn't be. So I've got seven numbers here. Let's call these numbers. Even though they ordered pizzas um, back on October 24th, I'm going to call these customers and see if they even remember ordering pizzas. Hello? Hello, Andy? Yeah. Hey, Andy, this is Dave from the Pizza Hut. You ordered a pizza with us a while back. Okay. And uh, we still haven't received that box. For the recycling, the pizza box? I'm not sure what you're talking about. Oh, well, you know the cardboard box that the pizza comes in? Uh-huh. We, we recycle those. And, you know, you, you're supposed to return those so we can use it for another customer's pizza. Uh, I think this must be some mistake. What do you mean it's a mistake? Did you return the pizza box to us? No. Then it's not a mistake, stupid. No, we just, we have, every time you order a pizza, we have to get those back from you. Otherwise, it's, uh, you know, cost us $5 per box if we don't recycle. Oh, he didn't like being called stupid, damn it. Let me try again. Hello? Hey, Andy, what the fuck's your problem? You hung up on me. Well, do I need to come over there right now? Well, if you bring the pizza box that you're supposed to bring, like, two months ago, that'd be great. Do you, Let me talk to your manager. You, this is the manager. This is Dave. Do you have the no. pizza box still? No, it's in the recycling with the county landfill system. Oh, that's stupid. Why would you do something like that? You know you're supposed to return those. I, I'm calling the Pizza Hut corporate offices right now, and I'm reporting you, Dave, and I wish you luck with your form, with your next job. Reporting me for Goodbye. what? What did I do? Oh, come on. Well, that should be an interesting call to the corporate office. I really wish I could hear that happen, that phone call to the corporate office. I really need to start putting taps in people's houses so I can listen to their phone calls after I prank them. Or maybe have Giad hide behind his couch with a hidden camera and a Slurpee cup. That needs to be our next thing, Giad. I want you to start breaking into people's houses and recording their reactions after we hang up. Hello? Hello, Allison? Yes. Hey, Allison, this is Dave from the Pizza Hut. Uh, yes, how are you? Oh, pretty good. Um, you ordered a pizza from us back on October 24th? Uh, I don't really remember. Oh, well, yeah, it's in our computer. That's when it shows you last ordered okay. one. Okay. I was just wondering, um, you know, we haven't heard from you in a while. You know, what the fuck? Did you go to Domino's or are you just <laughs> really? eating healthier now or, or what's going on? Why, why haven't you ordered from us? What's this with the language? This has to be a joke. Oh, no, it's not a joke. I'm sorry. Maybe I shouldn't have said that. I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm, I'm a little. I, little I this, this can't be real. <laughs> no, I don't usually do the phone. Oh. Okay, Kentucky, LOL. I'm sorry. I completely messed that up. I'm just going straight for the fuck word when I make calls now. I'm out of practice, I think, because I took that week off. Hello? Hey, is this Masha? Masha? Hello? Masha Rusta? Sorry, you have the wrong number. No, I'm calling from the Pizza Hut. You ordered a pizza from us? Uh, yeah, you did. Don't did. don't lie. Don't lie. No, I didn't order a pizza from you. Oh, yes, you did. What's your name? What's my name? That's the question. You just called my phone. Right, now I'm asking what your name is. Dummy. Well, it says on our computer your name is Masta Rusta. Do I sound like Masta Rusta? Kind of. Who is that? How the hell would I know? I don't know. I live in 
Spartanburg, South Carolina, so yeah, there's but- no way you would Georgia, so I would order a pizza from you. Well, you weren't visiting Georgia and, and ordered a pizza? No, sir. Oh, okay. I guess it's Kentucky LOL's fault. He's an idiot. Huh? It's Kentucky LOL's fault. He's an idiot. Kentucky LOL. Yeah, Kentucky LOL. He's the one that submitted this list to me. So I'm sorry for the call. I was just going to telemarket you. Oh, you was? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, okay. Telemarket me on what? Well, it's none of your business well, because your business. you don't even live around here. Around so we here. can't sell you siding. We can't sell you siding. Oh, okay. Can't sell me what? Siding. Oh, yeah. All right. Thank you. You're welcome. Have a You're nice welcome. day. Have a nice day. God, Kentucky LOL. What the hell? Send me a list of bad numbers and fake names like Mashtarusta. <laughs> Whatever the hell that is. Welcome to Verizon Wireless. The wireless customer you called is not... All right, no answer on that one. I've tried her about three times now. I guess that's it for that pizza place. I'm going to move on to the next one on Kentucky LOL's list. Somewhere else in the South, where they ordered back in October. Number you are trying to call is not reachable. Oh. PP. All right, there's only one left. This is the last one. It's probably going to suck, or he's not going to answer, or I'm not going to know what to say to him. Hello, Toe Hello, is Gary there? Gary? Yep. Hold on just a minute. Okay. This is Gary. Hey, Gary. This is Dave from Pizza Hut. Yes, sir. And uh, you ordered a pizza from us a while back. Gary. Yep. Uh, and you're, you're, you're with... No, I'm... Look, basically... I don't think so. Well, no, yeah, you did. We have it in our records here. But I, you know okay. we have caller ID, right? Okay, sure. Yeah, what you've been making prank calls to us all day, and it's getting on our nerves. And you just need to stop it, okay? We're not going to involve the police, but stop making. Sir, let, let me let me explain something. We're a government agency. If somebody's making prank calls, record it, turn it into the to the law, and somebody will take care of it. Oh. we are a government company on reservation. I don't know what you're talking about. Oh no, there, it's coming from your file, number. Please. it's coming from your number, and I recognize your voice. <laughs> Uh, sir, file a suit, okay? And, and, I don't and, have a and, clue what you're talking and about. And you're asking for the salmonella special? I don't think it's funny, and I think you need to grow up. Sir, you have a good day, because I don't know what you're talking about. This is a professional business. Well, not very professional. You're making fucking prank calls. <laughs> I did not understand what the title of the business was when I first called in. So I don't know what kind of government place I just pranked. Hello, Toe be. Hi, um, I just called a second ago for Gary. Yeah. And he got very loud with me and yelled at me and threatened me with a what, lawsuit. What can we help you with? Well, I, I work at the Pizza Hut. Yeah? And um, Where? I, I keep getting here in and uh, I keep getting prank phone calls from this number, and I know it's Gary. I recognize his voice. Why would he be making prank calls? I don't know. He needs to grow up. How How old is he? Seriously. Come on. We've been getting prank- well. He's old enough not to be doing that, but there. I mean, he You'd hasn't think. even been in the office today, so I don't. I'm not sure who's who's calling you, but well, it isn't us. It's coming from your number, and it's Gary's voice. So he's doing something, and well, you just need to tell him to grow up. Okay, I'll do it. And and he threatened me with the government. He said, uh, "You can call the police if you want, but we're with the government, so we own the police. What are they going to do?" I mean, he he basically admitted to making the prank calls. And he keeps he's he's asking for the salmonella special, which is really immature. Well, that's um, I just can't imagine who's who's been doing that because he hasn't been in his office all day. Well, he must have so some I don't sort know of who's making those phone calls. He's forwarding the calls from his cell or something weird like that. He's probably some kind of a phone hacker. But what what what, what government business is this? We're owned by the Mississippi Band of Choctaw Indians. The, the Mississippi Band of what? Choctaw Indians. Oh, that just sounds like a, a ragtag band of criminals and gypsies or something. It sounds, well, it sound, doesn't sound very professional. you're not who you say you are either. What are you talking or about? you would know who that is. So, well, how would I know? don't call anymore. I just work at the pizza. Uh-huh. Okay. All right. Thank you. Tell Gary to grow up. Thank you.
Okay, well, that's the end of the list from Kentucky LOL. Thanks, Kentucky LOL, for that list of phone numbers. And congratulations on being successful in tricking a pizza place out of phone numbers. I'm assuming that's what you did. Not that I encourage that sort of thing. Guess what, everyone? That's the end of another fun-filled snowplow show. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I absolutely can promise you it's not going to be another week before I do another show. So if I take a few days to put the next one out, please don't start messaging my Facebook and everywhere else asking if I'm still alive and making up theories about why I've disappeared forever and I'm never going to do another show again. And when you listen to that interview with Carlito in the uh, the salad, the lettuce radio Uh, Don't listen to him when he says I'm not going to do live shows anymore. Carlito's full of shit, and he doesn't know what he's talking about. I'm sorry, Carlito. He does correct himself later in the interview. But be sure to stay in touch with all of the old X Prank Call Nation shows. I've put a link to all of them in the show notes, and I've probably forgotten some, but I've put links to Madhouse Live... Uh, Neon Knight's show, Giad, Dwight, Laugh Track Matt and Zax, Mistress Morgan, and Jag TV. And I probably got some of the links wrong because I does Mistress Morgan even have a page for her stuff? I'm not sure. Uh, if I messed anything up, just send me an email, you guys, and hopefully I will fix it for you really soon. Hey, something I forgot to mention on the beginning of the show, which is understandable because my beginning intro was really, really, really long, but it's regarding Rappy McRapperson, and everyone knows how much of a boner I have for Rappy McRapperson, and I'm going to bring this up on the next show, but I'm going to go ahead and say it now. Rappy has a Patreon, and it is patreon.com slash ghost Rappy, and I'm supporting him, and you should too. In fact, if you're supporting the Phone Losers show, you should just stop supporting PLA and support Rappy instead because he's much more important than me, and I'm sure most of you agree with that. So check him out at patreon.com slash ghostrappy. And he is, seriously, he's a guy that is much more deserving of Patreon than I am. He's doing actual art stuff. I'm just doing stupid prank calls. So if you enjoy Rappy stuff, I recommend supporting him if you can. And that's it. That's it for today's show. Thank you very much, Chris and Sarah, for sponsoring today's show. And don't forget to visit phonelosers.org and look in the show notes. I put lots of links to things in today's show, like Carlito's interview, Rappy's Patreon, and all of the links to the other Prank Call Nation hosts. I'm going to end today's show with a song by The Grammar Club, which has been stuck in my head all week, and I've probably listened to it about 20 or 30 times. And if you're listening on YouTube, you're not going to get to hear it, so it sucks to be you. You should be listening on the podcast feed. Bye, everyone. I'm making... I know you have time because you're a hobo. You don't have a job. I work, sir. I work still. And don't tell me and quit calling me a hobo. (laughs) 